the trade and economic policies of the European Union make it one of the most powerful economies in the globe. Accounting to about one-fifth of the world's exports and imports, it is the leading trade power of the world and has always created conditions for trade to flourish. This makes the European Union a dynamic worldwide economic structure. It plays an important role in the global trade and trade dialogues. The current members of the European Union are Bulgaria, Austria, Belgium, Finland, Croatia, Cyprus, Ireland, the Czech Republic, Denmark, Luxembourg, Estonia, France, Germany, Portugal, Malta, Hungary, Spain, Italy, Latvia, Lithuania, Slovenia, the Netherlands, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Sweden, Greece and the United Kingdom. The foundation of the European Union was supranational where there was no place for war even in the thoughts. Democracy would be reinforced according to the Schuman Declaration, which was made by Robert Schuman and other noted leaders in 1950. Another declaration laid in 1951 by the name Europe Declaration has similar thoughts. However, the final pillars were laid by the Maastricht Treaty, which was functional from November 1, 1993. The whole idea of the treaty was to enhance Europe politically and economic assimilation by developing one European currency, Euro, which was effective in 1999, unified foreign and security policy, common citizenship rights and by increased collaboration in the zones of asylum, immigration and legal matters. The original treaty has been amended by three more treaties of Amsterdam in 1997, Nice in 2001 and Lisbon in 2007. The Founding Fathers of the European Union There are 11 men who are considered as the Founding Fathers of the European Union. However, there are many others who have contributed to the founding of this powerful union. The list below has been randomly written and every person, irrespective of the order, have played important roles in the creation of the European Union. Conrad Adenauer Conrad was the first Chancellor of West Germany and wanted to bring about peace between West Germany and France when he was holding office between 1949 and 1963. He was successful in doing so when the country signed the LSE Treaty in 1963 and the countries became friends. Joseph Bach Bech was the Prime Minister of Luxembourg and is credited with the establishment of the Benelux Customs Union and the European Coal and Steel Community. The Messina Conference of 1955 was Bech's work and it was here that the base of the European Economic Community was laid in 1958. Johann Willem Bayen Bayen is the one who had created the common market or single market as it is popularly known as. Winston Churchill Churchill was the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom during the World War II. In order to avoid any more wars in Europe, he had vouched for a united Europe which would be structured democratically. Alcida de Gasperi The Prime Minister of Italy for the period between 1945 and 1953, Gasperi was a very experienced man and he skillfully meditated between the European states. He created the Council of Europe and caused the reunion among them. Walter Holstein Another important person in creating the common market, Walter Holstein was a German diplomat who then served as the European Commission's first president at the European Economic Community for the period from 1958 and 1967. Siko Manscholt A Dutch politician, Manscholt was also a farmer. He had seen the Dutch famine of 1944 and his idea was to make Europe self-sufficient in food. This led to the common agricultural policy. Jean Monnet Monnet has also been referred to as the father of Europe. He always wanted to see a unified Europe. His revolutionary efforts were the key to the formation of European coal and steel community, what is known as European Union today. He helped in the creation of Schumann Declaration of 1950. Robert Schumann Schumann was the foreign minister of France between 1948 and 1952. It was Robert Schuman who created the Schuman Declaration along with Monet. The declaration contained an agreement which said that the production French and German productions of steel and coal would be placed under a single international authority. Paul Henry Spark Spark was the Prime Minister of Belgium and had significant roles in NATO, 
Council of Europe, United Nations and the European Coal and Steel Community. He was also responsible for the creation of Treaty of Rome of 1957. This treaty led to the formation of European Economic Community. Spark was also a negotiator in the Benelux Customs Union of 1944. Altiero Spinelli Besides being a part of the Italian Renaissance in the World War II, he was also the writer of Spinelli Plan of 1984, which was the commencement of the process that would conclude in the Maastricht Treaty and the formation of the European Union. Thoughts on European unity before 1945 Europe had earlier been united by several mighty empires. The thoughts of a united Europe were first seen in the year 1453 when the Turks fell Constantinople. A Hussite king of Bohemia, George of Podeprady, had proposed the unity of Christian nations of Europe against the Turks. This, however, was completely based on religious philosophy and had nothing to do with geographical locations of the nations. It was an American colonist by the name of William Penn who wrote a European Parliament in 1693 when he saw a devastated Europe after the war. He intended to prevent war, Penn, however, failed to define how it would fit into the dogmatic actuality of Europe during that time. Abbot Charles de Saint-Pierre had also proposed the creation of a European group with 18 independent states who would have no borders. They would share the treasury and there would be an economic union. Famous Europeans, such as Tadeusz Kojczutsko and Marquis de Lafayette, shared their vision of United States of Europe when the Americans had claimed their independence after the American War of Independence. During the 19th century, Napoleon Bonaparte has once stated in one of his conversations that if Europe managed to bring about peace internally between the states, a United States of Europe was probable. Augustine Thierry and Saint-Simon, who were French socialists, also had the same thoughts in creating some type of parliament in the Europe, which they mentioned in their essay, The Organization of the European Society. A Polish scientist, Wojciech Jastrzebowski, had also published a concept which he named United States of Europe. It spoke about peace amongst the nations. There were 77 articles in this project, and it saw United States of Europe as an organization rather than a superstate. Giuseppe Mazzini, in 1843, wanted to form a federation of European republics. Mazzini was a politician and writer from Italy. It was Victor Hugo who actually set the backdrop for the unification in 1847. In the International Peace Congress, Hugo used the word United States of Europe in his speech, which was organized in Paris in 1849. He imagined a united Europe and said that there would be a day when the United States of America and the United States of Europe will come face to face and reach out of each other across the seas. Hugo's idea was mocked in the hall, but he did not give up on his vision and brought forth the idea once again in 1851. John Stuart Mill Giuseppe Garibaldi, Mikhail Bakunin, and even the French National Assembly called for a United States of Europe. There were several writers and politicians who envisioned a united Europe, including a Polish writer, Feodor de Korwin Szymanowskis, whose work said that focus should be on statistics, monetary policy, parliamentary reforms, and economics instead of independence, nationalism, and federation. He also looked forward to uniting Europe under a single currency. When the First World War came to an end, there were many more who came up with the idea of a unified Europe. Among them were a French Prime Minister, Aristide Brand, a French politician, Edouard Herriot, Arthur Saltera, and a Polish statesman by the name Josef Pilsudski. Fascism, communism, Great Depression and the World War II diverted the thoughts of the people and united Europe was once again dusty. The Hungarian Prime Minister, Paul Telecki, was a supporter of the United States of Europe. In order to bring about peace in the nation, German ministers Cecil von Renthe Fink and Joachim von Ribbentrop also proposed a European association in 1943. The Germans got some Nazi support when the thought on single currency, trade and economic agreements, a central bank in Berlin, labour policy and regional opinion. The thought, however, had Germany in the lead, with all the states as its subordinates. The countries they proposed to join this German-led Europe were Slovakia, Germany, Spain, Denmark, Norway, France, Croatia, Italy, Finland, Greece, Serbia, Romania, Bulgaria, 
and Hungary. It was Jean Monnet who had stated in 1943 that the unity of Europe was not possible if the states are reconstituted on their basis of national independence and that the states should organize into an alliance as they were too small to warranty any type of growth and success to its people. European Coal and Steel Committee to Treaties of Rome, 1945 to 1957. Europe was the worst to have suffered the effect. Europe was the worst to have suffered the effects and after effects of World War II. The Holocaust and bombings of Nagasaki and Hiroshima left the people wanting for a united Europe once again, so there would be no war. The nuclear weapons unveiled in the war left everyone horrific. To make sure. Germany didn't indulge in the production of such weapons again, their industry was dismantled partially. After the war, people looked forward for a peaceful Europe once again. In 1946, Winston Churchill called for United States of Europe once again. This time, no one tried to suppress this call and the Council of Europe was founded in 1949. In the subsequent year, Robert Schumann suggested for a community which would incorporate the steel and coal industries of Europe. Both coal and steel are the two vital elements required to build war weapons. This speech was given by Schumann on May 9, 1950, after which the Treaty of Paris was signed in 1951 by Italy, West Germany, France and the Benelux countries which founded the European Coal and Steel Community. Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg together were known as Benelux countries. The International Authority for the Ruhr, which was responsible for the regulation of coal and steel in West Germany, ended their control with the signing of Treaty of Paris, which declared that the activities of the coal and steel for West Germany would now be taken care of by the European coal and steel community. This also led to the establishment of High Authority and Common Assembly, which are the European Commission and European Parliament respectively in the present. Jean Monnet was the President of the High Authority, while Paul Henry Spark took the place of the President for Common Assembly. The Court of Justice was set in place which would make sure that the laws of E which would make sure that the laws of ECSC and the articles mentioned in the treaty would be enforced. There were seven judges who were appointed for a period of six years after the mutual agreement of the national government. The judges were simply required to be qualified for the position irrespective of their nationalities. A consultative committee was also created, which is the Economic and Social Committee today. The 30 to 50 positions were equally divided amongst the dealers, workers, producers and consumers of steel and coal sector. The committee played an important role in controlling the expenditures and budget. The money of the community was spent on social housing activities, re-employment and in the concerned sectors. There were some documents which were leaked in 2009 which showed that a group known as Bilderberg Group was also supporting the Union of Europe. The Bilderberg Group meetings were private meetings held annually where people from Europe and North America who belong to the elite class, political, finance, media backgrounds and other experts of various industries were involved. Between May 29th and 31st, 1954, the first meeting was held in Netherlands at the Hotel de Bilderberg in Oosterbeek. This group had supported single currency and a common market in Europe. The market would have lower tariff rates compared to the rates in the outside world. It was only at a conference at Messina that the Spark Committee was formed, which was an intergovernmental committee that prepared the Spark Report, which contained the conclusive report and was presented to the six member states of the ECSC. In the Venice conferences, which took place on May 29th and 30th, 1956, the Spark Report was accepted and a conference of the Intergovernmental Committee was organized. The conference was centered on the economic harmony of Europe. This also led to the signing of Treaties of Rome in 1957, thereby establishing the European Atomic Energy Community and the European Economic Community. Three Communities, 1958-1972 the European Communities, or European Community, is a merger of three international organizations which were administered by the same set of rules. The three institutions were the European Coal and Steel Community, European Economic Community and European Atomic Energy Community. The European Economic Community was the most important among the three. 
the Committee of Permanent Representatives, was founded in 1958. The role of this committee was to develop the agenda for the Governmental Council of the European Union Conventions. It may also take some bureaucratic judgments. It supervises and synchronizes the work of 250 committees and working parties made up of public servants from the member states who work on matters at the technical level to be conversed afterwards by Coriper and the Council. The Presidency of the Council of the European Union chairs the meeting. The Parliamentary Assembly, which was the Common Assembly, earlier had a meeting on March 19, 1958, where they elected Robert Schuman as the President for all the three communities. In the year 1960, Norway, Sweden, Austria, United Kingdom, Denmark and Portugal founded the European Free Trade Association in Stockholm. This association came into force on May 3, 1960. Denmark, United Kingdom, Norway and Ireland looked forward to being members of the communities. Sweden, Austria and Switzerland requested for economic relationship convenants. Charles de Gaulle, who was then serving as the president of the French, opposed British membership, calling it a Trojan horse of the United States. An additional crunch was caused in regard to suggestions for the funding of the Common Agricultural Policy, which came into power in 1962. The provisional period, where verdicts were made by harmony, had come to an end. The Council decided by taking a majority's vote. De Gaulle's disagreement to supranationalism and dread of the other adherents challenging the CAP resulted in an empty chair policy where French members were removed from the European establishments till the French veto was restored. Ultimately, on January 29, 1966, a compromise was got with the Luxembourg Compromise, where a gentleman's agreement states that the members could use a veto only when there is a question of national interest. Merger Treaty There was a pact made on September 24, 1963, between the members of the administrative bodies of the three communities. After a year, it was decided that there would be nine members in the single commission. There would be two members each from the larger states of Germany, Italy and France, while there would be one member each from the smaller states of Netherlands and Luxembourg. On April 8, 1965, the merger treaty was finally signed and it was enforced on July 1, 1967. All the three communities were governed by the same institutional structure. Jean Ray was made the first head of the commission. He was appointed on July 6, 1967. The first enlargement happened in 1973 when three more states were added, Ireland, United Kingdom and Denmark. Greece joined the community in 1981, while Spain and Portugal followed soon in 1986. The community has 16 members till 2013 and by 2017 the community has 28 members. Enlargement and Dolores Commission, 1973-1993 when the French president was changed, United Kingdom, along with Gibraltar, Denmark and Ireland joined the European communities on January 1, 1973. The first elections of the European Parliament were held in 1979 by universal suffrage. Universal suffrage is when all the adults except for a few have the right to vote. 410 members were elected who elected Simone Veil as the president of the European Parliament. Bale was the first woman to become the President of the European Parliament. After six years of applying to join the community, the application of Greece was finally considered on January 1, 1981. Greenland voted to leave the community as it gained home rule from Denmark. January 1, 1986, Portugal and Spain also joined the community. The states had applied for a membership long back in 1977. Delores' commission was management of Jacques Delores, who was the eighth president of the European Commission. His first term was from 1985 to 1988, the second was from 1989 to 1992, and the last was from 1993 to 1994. It made Delors the longest-serving president of the commission. When Delors headed the European Commission, the term was regarded as the most prosperous times for the commission. When Delors took over the Commission, Europe was going through eurosclerosis, which can be explained as an economic stagnation. This happens when there is unemployment despite the economic growth in the country. 
There were several problems such as want of democracy, slow enlargement and financial issues which gave rise to indifferent and deleterious approaches in the community. Delors tried to get to the bottom of the problem and visited the member states and found that Europe was quite slow in addressing the problems. He did not find anyone agreeing on the single market, determined he set a date for completing his task, 1992. Despite putting in all his efforts, he was criticised for not doing his best. To accomplish his target of completing the single market, he had to understand the political structure of the community. He had to know which member would negate the proposal. Delors persuaded the leaders to opt for qualified majority voting so the process wouldn't stop. So he put Baron Cockfield in the drafting legislation. Cockfield's work is considered accurate and his knowledge about the system was fabulous. The internal market was completed by Delors' commission and the grounds for single European currency set. Delors and his commissioners are said to be the founding fathers of Euro. Their work led to the signing of Single European Act in 1986 and the Treaty of Maastricht in 1992. During his presidency, there were many enlargements including Portugal and Spain. Soon after the reunification of Germany, Finland, Sweden and Austria joined the community in 1995. 2004 onwards, the gates to the community were opened to eastern countries too. Creation of European Union, 1993-2004 to The European Union was created once the Maastricht Treaty was enforced from November 1, 1993. The European Union was in place along with its three pillars which comprised of the European Community's pillar which took care of the economic, social and environmental policies. It encompassed the European Community, the European Coal and Steel Community, till it expired in 2002, and the European Atomic Energy Community. The Common Foreign and Security Policy Pillar was in charge of foreign policy and subjects concerning military. Police and judicial cooperation in criminal matters had to fight against crime. This pillar was originally named Justice and Home Affairs. A socialist group was created when the 1994 European elections took place. This group was the biggest in the Parliament. Jacques Santerre was proposed by the Council to be the President of the Commission but was in an undermining position as he was the second choice. Although Parliament approved Santa for the position of the President but he managed to gain more support and earned 416 votes to 103. He used his powers to select his commissioners and they took control of office on January 23, 1995. Sweden, Austria, Finland, Iceland, Norway and Liechtenstein became a part of European Economic Area which was a body that was enforced since January 1, 1994. This body permitted European Free Trade Association for states to join the single European market. The preceding year, Schengen Agreement was made between seven members. The purpose of this agreement was to remove all borders checks that would permit all the vehicles to cross common borders of the signatories without any checks, synchronization of visa strategies. By the end of 1996, of almost all the members had signed this agreement. There was more development seen in creation of Euro. On January 1, 1994, the European Monetary Institute was established. The aim of the European Monetary Institute was to supervise the second phase of the Monetary Union. The group first met on January 12, 1994, along with its first president, Alexander Lamfalusi, who was later on replaced by Wim Duisenberg in 1997. The European Economy and Monetary Fund aided in the cooperation between the member of the states and national banks, thereby laying the foundation for Euro. The European Monetary Institute was dissolved on June 1, 1998 and the European Central Bank and European System of Central Banks were founded. Euro launched The Euro was finally launched on January 1, 1999. When it was launched, there were 11 member states that had agreed for Euro. Soon, Greece also adopted Euro, thus becoming the 12th country to accept Euro as their currency. Together, they officially introduced Euro on January 1, 2002. All the old notes and coins were put into circulation. Later, Slovenia on January 1, 2007 joined in as the 13th member state. 
The euro is at present the single currency for 19 countries of the 28 members of the European Union and four additional countries from Europe that have been given permission to use the euro. Many special member states' territories that are outside the borders of Europe, such as Azores, Guadeloupe, Martinique, Madeira, Guyana, Canaries, Reunion and the collective territories of Saint-Pierre, Mayotte and Miquelon also use the euro. Between 1991 and 2001, the Yugoslav war stimulated the European Union to form the Common Foreign and Security Policy. This organization was given the responsibility of security and defense actions. However, the European Union failed to take action on time and the peacekeepers of the United Nations could not prevent the Srebrenica massacre, which happened in 1995 in Herzegovina and Bosnia. Genocide killed about 8,000 Bosnian young boys and men. Europe had never witnessed such a massacre since the World War II. The North Atlantic Treaty Organization had to intrude to force the opponents to negotiate. The community budget of the Commission for 1996 was not approved by the Parliament. The Commission was charged with deceit, financial mishandling and favouritism. Before the Parliament could throw them out, the entire team of Santa's commissioners put down their resignation. Delors concepts and works had left a deep impact on the entire Parliament and the Council, which put the Commissions in a challenging position in the coming years. After the resignation of the entire Santa's Commission, the Socialists couldn't uphold their position as the majority and the People's Party took over. Soon the Prodi Commission, which was led by the Italian ex-Prime Minister Romano Prodi, established the European Anti-Fraud Office. Prodi's commission took over the office on September 13, 1999. The European Anti-Fraud Office, or OLAF, is mandated by the European Union with protecting the financial securities of the European Union. The establishment has been assigned three tasks. To battle swindle affecting the budget of the European Union. Scrutinize dishonesty by staff of the European Union institutions and cultivate anti-fraud regulations and strategies. Some of them describe Prodi as the first Prime Minister of Europe. On October 18, 1999, Javier Solana was appointed as the Secretary General of the Council and the strengthened High Representative for the Common Foreign and Security Policy. Solana was in the position for 10 years and was replaced by Baroness Ashton on December 1, 2009, after holding the position for five years, 2009. The position was taken care of by Frederica Mogherini, who serves the position till date. Solana was also considered by many as the Foreign Minister of Europe. After the Nice Treaty was enforced on February 1, 2003, there was another enlargement and ten new members joined the European Union. The Nice Treaty was actually signed on February 26, 2001. The Treaty of Rome and Maastricht Treaty were amended by the Nice Treaty. Many people had seen the Nice Treaty as a weak compromise. Since Germany was higher on its population, it demanded that this be reflected in a higher vote waiting in the Council. France, however, opposed this and asserted that the equality be maintained amongst them. The Commission suggested that the earlier weighted voting way should be changed with a double majority method that would need all those who were voting in support to represent a majority of member states and the population for a proposal which would have to be sanctioned. France rejected this suggestion for reasons they did not disclose. A negotiation happened that offered for a double majority of votes cast and member states and where a member state might appeal for authentication to the countries who were voting in support signified sufficient proportion of the population of European Union. European Union, 2004 to present The largest transnational elections to happen in the European Union were between June 10 and 13, 2004. 25 members participated in this biggest transnational election. The European People's Party European Democrats came out victorious for the second time. The sixth parliamentary elections also witnessed the lowest voter turnout, which was 45.5%. It was the second time it had gone below 50%. Voter turnout is the percentage of people who are eligible to vote in an election. The new parliament approved José Manuel Barroso to become the next commission president on July 22, 2004. Barroso and his 25 commissioners did not get a smooth road to walk on. 
Parliament questioned the number of candidates he had, and because of this he had to withdraw and select once again. Frode and his commissioners had to prolong their stay up to November 22, 2004, till the new set of commissioners were finalised and instated. It was decided that the European Constitution would take the place of the existing treaties of the European Union, while a single text magnified the qualified majority voting to policy zones that was decided earlier by unanimity among the member states and give legally empower the Charter of Fundamental Rights. For a treaty to be enforced in European Union, the member states need to ratify it. Because of different constitutional arrangements and procedures, ratification could be different for every country. European Union treaties are sanctioned through parliamentary votes in most states, while member states like Denmark and Ireland hold referendums. Since the constitution was new and unique, many people who were against the constitution debated on having referendums throughout Europe for it to be made official. The first member state to hold the referendum was Spain and the treaty was favoured by 76% votes. Many other member states such as Denmark, Netherlands, Portugal, Spain, France, Ireland, Luxembourg and United Kingdom declared that they would hold referendums. France and Denmark rejected the referendum while majority in Luxembourg and Netherlands favoured the treaty. The other member states cancelled their referendums. When the treaty was rejected, a group of highly qualified and experienced politicians got together to understand why the treaty was rejected. On September 30, 2006, the group known as the Amato Group met in Rome. They presented their report on June 4, 2007. They suggested that a new intergovernmental conference should be established who are experts in writing a new treaty, thereby rewriting the Maastricht Treaty and the Treaty of Rome, while a legally binding status would be given to the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. They also said that the new treaty would be established on the first and fourth parts of the Constitution and the remaining changes would be done through the amendments made in the Treaty of Rome. In the next European summit meeting held on June 2007, the member states they decided to drop the idea of constitution and amend the treaties that would continue to be in force. They also decided on a comprehensive directive for a new intergovernmental conference to discuss a new treaty comprising such amendments to the prevailing treaties, mainly the Treaty of Rome and the Treaty of Maastricht. These dialogues were accomplished by the end of the year. The new treaty, which had earlier been denoted as the Reform Treaty, now became the Lisbon Treaty on its ratification in Lisbon on December 13, 2007. Through it, the President of European Council and the post of High Representative was expanded considerably. Their much discussion on who should take the position as the President of European Council, Herman van Rompuy was given the role of the President and Catherine Ashton was given the position of High Representative. The European People's Party won the 2009 elections too. There were once again two parties in the Parliament, the People's Party and the Socialists. Jerzy Buzek became the first elected president. The Council nominated Barroso for a second term and the European People's Party also supported him. They had also declared Barroso as their candidate before the elections took place. The Greens European Free Alliance and the Socialists opposed Barroso. Even though much behind their schedule, Barossa was approved by the Parliament. The fifth enlargement happened on January 1, 2007, when Bulgaria and Romania were added. Slovenia, Malta and Cyprus all adopted the Euro in 2007 and 2008 respectively. The European Union has been facing a debt crisis since the end of 2009. It is a multi-year debt crisis. Member states Portugal, Greece, Cyprus, Spain and Ireland, all using euro, couldn't pay back nor were they able to have their government debt refinanced or bail out overly indebted banks which were being monitored without the help of the third parties. These third parties were European Central Bank, other countries using euro and the International Monetary Fund. The leaders of the eurozone decided to help the member states who couldn't raise funds by making provision for loans. This situation had an impact on the treaties of the European Union. It ruled out all bailouts of a Euro member state in so as to inspire them to cope their finances, 
This was contradicted by the disagreement that these were loans and not grants, and that neither the European Union nor the other member states presumed any accountabilities for the debts of the member states who were helped. Greece was trying to reinstate its finances, while the other member states were also under threat, and it was likely that the members of the Eurozone would also be affected with the consequences. The European Union agrees on a loan mechanism. The crunch also urged an agreement which required additional economic assimilation and a variety of offers such as the Federal Treasury, European Monetary Fund or others. The European Union has been bestowed with the Nobel Peace Prize in 2012. The award was given to the European Union for their contribution to improvement of peace and appeasement, democracy and human rights in Europe. While awarding the European Union with the Nobel Peace Prize, the Nobel Committee said that the horrible misery in the World War II called for a new Europe and today war between France and Germany is unthinkable. This clearly demonstrates how using well-targeted efforts and by gaining confidence past enemies can become close friends. Croatia also joined the European Union on July 1, 2013. The territory of Mayotte and French Indian Territory were also made a part of the European Union as the outermost region. There has been much hustle going in the European Union ever since the citizens of United Kingdom have voted to move out from the European Union. This vote happened in a referendum on June 13, 2016. The results favoured the decision by 51.9%. The process is known as Brexit. However, there is much controversy on what changes would take place in the United Kingdom. The present Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, Theresa May, has already submitted a notice to the President of the European Council, Donald Tusk. The notice read that the United Kingdom would be leaving the European Union under the Article 50 of the European Union's Lisbon Treaty. This notice has marked the official beginning of United Kingdom and European Union negotiations on what their relationship will be once Britain moves out of the Union. This decision would come down hard upon the 3.5 million citizens of the European Union who are residing in United Kingdom. A cloud of insecurity hovers them, as they are yet to know whether or not they would legally be permitted to stay in Britain. Besides, around 44% of the exports of United Kingdom are absorbed by the European Union, the trade barriers that would come up might lead to a recession in Britain. What would follow is two years of strong negotiations to avoid such outcomes. Although the European Union and Britain have completely opposite goals on the important disputes, a consolation would be tried to reach. The aim would be to devise a negotiation deal on significant disagreements, such as a migration which would permit a lenient Brexit where United Kingdom would keep some admission to the single market of the European Union. Harmony is looked for by all, and this is what led to the formation of the European Union. Peace finally prevails in Europe. A united Europe had been the vision of hundreds of people who wanted a peaceful and prosperous Europe to live in. After years of disagreements and struggles, and the efforts of many people who wanted to see a united Europe, where there were no wars and fights, the dream of many such people came true when the first community was formed. The hope got stronger when the first enlargement happened, after which there was no turning back for the European Union. What began with six member states is now a mighty union with 28 member states. Today, the European Union is one of the most influential organizations that is globally affecting the trade and commerce of the world. However, the fate of United Kingdom is yet to be witnessed once it moves out of the European Union.